indeed. We're very, very lucky to welcome our guests today. Um, firstly, I say a big hello to Richard Ashton. Richard, can give us a wave and say hello. Hello. Hello, hello, hello. What, what was that? Was that a hello? Or was that a... <laughs> hello, honestly. Yeah, no, there we are. For some reason, you didn't come up on my... There he is, the lovely Richard Ashton. And also, this afternoon, this evening, we are talking to the... Well, apparently, we're talking to Sheila Hancock. Debbie, Debbie would you care to explain for, for the viewers that have joined us very kindly this afternoon? Just what's so... happening? So about a year ago, my friend James, Robert Moore, naming and shaming, changed my profile name on all my devices to Sheila Hancock. And I keep changing it back and it keeps reverting. Every time I go online, I'm Sheila Hancock again. I can't get rid of her. <laughs> and I and then I forget because I think this, this time it'll work. This time I'll be Debbie Chosen again. And so I've been trying to get into this room for hours. I was here like two o'clock in the morning, waiting to get in. And no one would let me in because they thought I was actually Sheila Hancock. <laughs> <laughs> so I is, do apologize. Debbie, are you running this on two devices? Because I'm getting a lot of messages no. here saying that there might be some hideous feedback. From me? It's just my oh, hideous yeah. I don't want to. I don't want to point fingers and name names, but... Okay, hold on, hold on. Let me see if I can, I'm going to put in some headphones. Okay. And see if that works, hang on. All of the technicals here, all of the technicals here. I know. Is that on? How is that sounding nope. for people? Yeah, yeah. People are saying that stopped, and we're all good. Can you hear me? Yes. Excellent. I can hear you. Thank you for joining us this afternoon. <laughs> well, listen. Thank let's, you for having us both. One thing I'll, I'll start as we're as we're with you. Um, I'm really I'm going to have to get in the habit of calling you Debbie. Debbie, the brazen Ms. Chazen. Um, yes. Very entertaining it was over Christmas. And Richard, I don't know if you saw this at all, but on. On Twitter, uh, Debbie did a lovely thing, which was every day, um, and we certainly followed it in this house, there was a new Christmas song to see us through to Christmas, like an advent calendar. It was wonderful. How did that come about? Is singing oh. something you're passionate about? Singing, do you know what? Singing I used to love when in my younger days. I had a pianist and everything. We went to we jazz clubs and all the rest of it and absolutely loved it. And then I had one bad experience uh, when I was slightly ill, I probably shouldn't have done a gig at all. And it was awful and horrible and embarrassing. And I coughed and spluttered my way through it. And I, that literally overnight, I stopped singing. And I had to have, recently, I, I rediscovered it. I had hypnotherapy. My, my young niece did a hypnotherapy course and she said, can I try it out on you? I said, oh. yes, please cure my fear of singing. <laughs> anyway, it kind of works, obviously. And I think I was ready for it as well. It's been like 20 years. And during first lockdown, because it was so frightening, I mean, being an actor, as you know, Richard, you're, you're out of control of your own career anyway. But yeah, exactly. But, you know, in lockdown, you're completely out of control. And in, and in some ways it was lovely because I woke up every day thinking, well, I don't have to wait for my agent to ring because he's not gonna, so I'm gonna have a lovely day. But in other ways, I had to rethink and think, well, what can I do that I'm in control of? And so I bought a really cheap PA, which is broken down 1,700 times, a little, you know, um, amp and backing tracks and microphone and stuff like that. And as soon as I was able, I went out busking. <laughs> and I loved it. And, I'm, you know, I did gigs and parties. And all of that stopped, obviously, for now. But I absolutely loved it. And I had the idea for the advent calendar on the 29th of November, <laughs> little realising that I possibly needed more time to do a song every day of December. <laughs> so it kind of took over my life till Christmas Eve. But uh, I'm glad you enjoyed it. Thank you so much. Yeah, very much so. Very much so. Uh, Richard, is singing something that's ever formed a part of your career? Well, I wouldn't call it a career unless you, you take the, the second Oxford English Dictionary definition of to, to move downhill at increasing speed in no particular direction. Uh, but about every five years, I do end up doing a biggish musical. Um, and I always have done panto and therefore played the villain and always have a song and all that kind of thing. Uh, so it's always been there, but I'm, an, I'm the actor that sings. Well, ask any musical director that's worked with me and they'll just look at you. Um, but I, when I finished Billy Elliot in the West End, it finished at the Victoria Palace. And I don't know if any of that can be described as singing or dancing, but certainly we were all lots of burly miners in big boots, tap dancing and singing away to Elton John. Um, yeah, I mean, it, I, I actually blame singing hymns at primary school for becoming an actor. 
because <laughs> it was work? the only. <laughs> well, it was the only thing that you did in the week where no one was specifically looking at you. You could be with lots of other people and kind of have fun. Um, and yeah. I, 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 the joy and the pleasure of, of doing that and sort of sing songs in the car and, and what have you. I mean, I'm old enough to remember when pubs had pianos. And so I, because my dad was a journalist, so I spent a lot of my childhood in, in pubs. Um, <laughs> listen, yeah, well, this is where I did my homework, uh, listening to <laughs> singing. And, and I, just, I just think it's there, you know. Uh, and also that rather irritating thing of, of parents making you learn the piano and then forcing you to play it for people and stuff like that. So I didn't do a, a advent calendar or anything, but with a load of chums, some of who are in the business, some of whom aren't, uh, through my friend Martin Ellis, um, who's a big West End singer and all that kind of thing. Um, we, we all played the ukulele uh, throughout lockdown. Um, Marvellous. But, but the brilliant thing about Zoom is, because we were all muted and he was the one playing and singing, we all sounded marvellous. <laughs> oh. What oh. Like, is a recording of that. There we go. Oh. That You dropped out momentarily there. You're back now. Right. Yes, so, here now. It's, uh, so uh, actually, just what I'm thinking of it, while we have this moment, um, there are, as we know, quite a number of people watching us. So hello to everyone out there in, in Zoom land. Um, and we'd love your questions. So if you have any questions you'd like to ask either uh, Richard or Sheila, then just drop them into the chat <laughs> below and we will be going through them. If your question does get selected, um, I will, uh, I'll, I'll call your name out and you will be automatically unmuted to be able to ask your question. So that's how it is going to work. Um, Richard, I'll stay with you just for a moment. And um, we were talking there about, about Sheila's, uh, Sheila's Christmas. <laughs> I'm never going to get over this. Debbie, summer. otherwise it's going to stick, isn't it? Debbie's little yeah. Christmas adventure. Um, Richard, you've certainly had a bit of a, a Christmas adventure of your own. If you look at certainly IMDb or even Netflix, um, that's a lot of Christmas films. Is it? Is it something that's enjoyable to do? Yes, it, it is enjoyable, and it and it, it it's almost taken the place of panto in my life because I've done yeah. I don't know I've been an actor thirty five and I've done nearly that many pantos, and uh, and then this Christmas thing started to happen by accident. Of course, you shoot those. It's not Christmas. So as I always say, it's, it, it's like um, always always Christmas, but never winter, if you get the, yes. the Narnia reference there. And on, on a, many times recently, we've been in, in Bucharest in the summer, taking their royal palaces and covering them in American sort of tinsel and baubles. And I mean, <laughs> it's the only time in my life I think it will ever happen is, is when an entire production grinds to a halt and somebody says, call the producer, call the producer. So, so we all stop filming. The producer comes on set, looks around, checks what we're doing, looks on the monitor, and then just says, bring me more Christmas. <laughs> and sure <laughs> enough, another 35 Christmas trees, and another hundred baubles, and everything arrives. And then the good people of Bucharest, well, actually, we were up at Pelesh in, in, the, in the Carpathians, in the, the Royal Summer Palace, is looking at us doing the, the equivalent of taking Windsor Castle or perhaps Sandringham or yeah. wherever and just covering it in Christmas tat. <laughs> <laughs> and I, there were occasions on which it was suggested that we weren't appreciated. But, you know, I love Christmas. Yeah. And, I, and I, I, I had not expected to get so much feedback from people who genuinely will turn on one of those channels on November the 15th yeah, and just watch cheesy Christmas until the cows come home. And we, we had a bit of a cause celebre because um, in order to um, publicize the fact we did a, a second Christmas Prince film, because we also did a third, uh, yes. Netflix said, hashtag who hurt you? Because they discovered that there were, I might have got these numbers wrong, but something like 49 subscribers who had watched our Christmas Prince film at least once a day for 29 days straight. Yeah. And I thought, oh, yeah, fair enough. You like a film, you watch it. I do it. I do it with Aliens too all the time. Yeah. Um, but what people were shocked at was that Netflix are actually watching what we're watching. Well, yes. of course yes. they are. That's how they work out what to make, which is, which is why we did Christmas Prince 2. And then why we did Christmas Prince 3. Um, and we, and we haven't done what we 
didn't do one this year. I'm a little bit bereft, actually. <laughs> my, my character's in, the, in, a, in an orange jumpsuit. And, and, you know, the state of Aldovia is terrible peril. Um, but who knows if we'll ever get back there. <laughs> I'd be a liar if I said I hadn't watched them. <laughs> I'm a, <sighs> I, 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 well, I, as, as well as your good self, there's, a, there's another friend in the cast as well. And I feel, you know, support, support each other's work. That's the way we look at it. So, yes, I, I, I need to know um, what's really? going to happen. You need to be freed. That's what I say. <laughs> I think so. I think we owe, it, we owe it to the world. I think yeah. so. I think so. Listen, uh, Debbie, uh, Christmas, of mm. course, Christmas, of course, was your uh, your inroad to uh, to Doctor Who. Um, Indeed. Again, again, for you, uh, Christmas in June or July, I'm guessing. I love Christmas, mostly because I'm Jewish. <laughs> and I'm the sort of Jewish... <laughs> who uh, sadly, well, not sadly, but I'm, I'm, not, I'm not a big believer and I, I like a pork sausage on the Sabbath. That's, that's my religion. <laughs> so I know very, a lot of people with that religion. Thing. Sorry? I said I know a lot of people with that religion. Do carry yeah. on. <laughs> yeah, it's all about food, basically. So I'm a very, very bad Jew. And because I was always denied Christmas growing up, I love Christmas. And I am the person who puts on the Christmas channel, November the 15th, sobs my way through every film, have to watch The Muppet Christmas Carol on Christmas Eve. I, I haven't got a tree in my home because we haven't got room for it, which I know sounds daft, but we, re we really don't have a corner for a tree. But this year, for the first year ever, we had a tree in our communal back garden, which during lockdown, I just went, I don't care if it's communal, I'm putting my things in there. So it's now lovely and everyone appreciates it. But uh, we had a tree in the back garden and I was so thrilled. Um, I just sobbed the whole way through the Christmas period. Sobbed and ate and drank a lot. <laughs> <laughs> That's beautiful. That's beautiful. So was it therefore a joy to have to kind of dress up and, and do Christmas earlier in the year, back when you filmed Voyage of the Damned? It was actually. I mean, it was, it, I, I seem to remember it was blooming Boiling. This, I mean, was, was it 10 years ago now? I think it was, even longer. Someone, someone here will know how long ago that was. I, yeah. I'm, 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 I'm far, I've just had another birthday. I can't remember these fine, fine <laughs> I details. can't remember what day of the week it is. I, don't, I, was, I can't remember my own name, clearly. Um, 13, 13 years. Thank you, David Maskell. Thank you, David. Like that. Oh, my God. I don't look a day younger, do I? Um, <laughs> I remember it because we were obviously we were in Wales and it was a boiling hot time, bizarrely. It didn't rain once. And I was in... Um, this woolen cowgirl outfit, and it was boiling, but loved every second, obviously. But it yeah. wasn't, I mean, the only thing that was Christmassy was the sort of decoration on board the spaceship, as I recall. It wasn't anything particularly the rest of the, the show that was that Christmassy. It just happened to be a Christmas episode. Yeah. Yeah, and it, and it was fabulous. Now, listen, we've already got a lot of questions coming in, and I want to make sure that as many people get to ask questions as they can. So um, I'm going to throw over to Media Lover. Media Lover, if we can find Ooh. Media Lover, who I believe has a question um, regarding some, some very geeky details. Where are you? Are you there with us? Yes, yes, I am. Uh... Fire away. Hi. Right. My question is to you, um... Can I call you Sheila or Debbie? Huh? <laughs> How about <laughs> Slebby? <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I put Sheila in my question, so I'll go with that then. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> right. Anyway, um, my question is, what did you know about Doctor Who before you were cast in Voyage of the Damned? Well, I, I will admit that I didn't uh, watch it up until Russell uh, started writing it, because Russell I'd met before on Mine All Mine in God knows what year. But so that was when I started taking an interest in it. Um, but my late father was actually in an episode, I think in 1969. Uh, oh gosh, I've, it's gone completely out of my, my, my head what the name of the episode was, but he was poisoned. And forgive me, I tell this story all the time because I, I love this story. So forgive me if you've heard it before. But when I was in Doctor Who, my late father was uh, a supporting artist and he, or an extra as they used to call them, a background uh, artist. Yeah. And he did so much stuff that he would never tell us what he was in because it was just like, you know, run of the mill. He'd come home and say things like, oh yeah, who was in that film I did today? Sir Lawrence, Sir Lawrence Olive something, can't remember. Can't remember, I think he's big, I don't know. <laughs> and we'd be like, dad! Anyway, so when I was in Doctor Who, someone sent me a 
still from the episode my late father was in. And he was standing like this. I don't know if you can see me, it was like that. And my late father was also an opera singer. And I thought, oh my God, he was in an episode of Doctor Who as an opera singer. That's amazing, because he looked like he was singing some <laughs> big aria. And then someone else sent me uh, a DVD or some, uh, a clip of his uh, episode. And he was actually being poisoned. Yeah. And it was the worst acting I've ever seen. Brilliantly terrible. But he was literally going... <laughs> <laughs> and not yes. singing at all. <laughs> so, so that was really the only time I'd, I'd sort of taken notice of Doctor Who. Um, but we were sort of... My parents divorced when I was young, so we were there were lots of girls in the family. And, and Doctor Who wasn't really uh, our viewing. We watched things like Anne of Green Gables and stuff like that, so I'm terribly sorry. But when <laughs> Russell uh, took over... Suddenly, f suddenly fell in love, and I'm, I'm, I'm now a big fan. Good, good. Richard, how about you? Would, how much did you know about Doctor Who before being off of the park? Oh, I, well, I, I, I was born in '65, so I'm all, you know, almost as old as the show. Um, and it, well, growing up as we did in the '70s, there was Doctor Who. Yeah, and then there were other things on television. Um, all sort of jumbled about, but but it, it was the be all and end all the central theme. Um, if I'm the youngest of four brothers, so you know it was Saturday, and it was what you talked about at school the next week, and it was why you put laundry baskets on your head and rolled down the stairs as a dying Dalek and all <laughs> of that good stuff. So and I, I've you know forgive and forgive my apologies to anybody who's heard all these things before, but. Um, to suddenly then find myself on the set, mm. looking at it all going on, even though, as you know, you know, concentration and, and, and we're all absolutely doing our jobs. But there's part of my brain which is exploding. Just, I, I'm in Doctor Who. <laughs> no, I'm really in Doctor Who. I'm really here. And I don't think I ever recovered that. I mean, there is an odd experience when you're I call it bucket on head acting so obviously it's Friday I had the whole suit on and all the rest yeah, of it yeah absolutely and so there is an odd displacement everybody else is doing what they're doing and, and living like normal human beings and you're inside this thing which means you can't sit down you can't stand up you can't do anything and please god don't fall over and it is it's a dream world and because I was two and a half hours three hours out of getting out of the suit everybody else is in the bar and in the restaurant and, and gone and I'm just staggering into the hotel and going throw myself in the swimming pool to try and recover so it, it, it's odd. If you turned around to me and said, actually, Richard, you, you weren't in Doctor Who. That's not, you, yeah. you, you dreamt that. I'd believe you. I go, oh, yeah. right. Oh, that explains it. Oh, so I was actually in a hospital bed having some sort of fugue. Okay, I get it. Um, <laughs> no, it's amazing. Yeah. It, it, probably, uh, so I, tell, uh, I did a pantomime with Colin Baker some years ago. Mm. And, it, and his era was sort of when probably I'd moved on to be interested in other things. And, and you know, I don't know if anybody else has this experience, but you might find 10 years in your life when you never watched telly. And certainly the theatre will do that to you because, you, I mean, I'm sure Debbie feels this. You, you get into doing shows and you, you don't watch the television. And, and certainly before, you know, all the streaming services and things we've got now, mm. I missed a good chunk of Doctor Who. But when Chris Eccleston came on, I thought, ah, well, he's a Salford man. I'm from Manchester. Yeah. But, you know, he'll, for me that. he'll forgive me that. Um, <laughs> then that was, that was me back in straight, straight away. Uh, it, 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 I didn't feel the, the dark period. I mean, a lot of my American friends, you know, I meet at conventions, will tell me about how they came to see the show out of order or actually even got to see it when it was almost underground, when it didn't yeah. exist, you know, yeah. before it got relaunched. Uh, so the idea of it not being there, I find frankly quite scary. Yes, yes, as as we did back in the dark times. So actually, some very different experiences there. But yeah. whilst we're on the subject, actually, Cedric, I believe, has a a question for us, which definitely relates to uh, what you were just discussing your time as Friday. Um, Cedric, are you there with us? Yes, if you can hear me. Richard, oh, yeah. you're leading on from that. How comfortable was that suit to wear? Given that I've I've done I used to do quite a bit of bucket on head acting, and I was one of the mondos in the Fifth Element, in which people passed out and had to go to hospital. Um, 
the Ice Warrior is the heaviest thing I've ever lifted in my life. Uh, I wore real steel, you know, chain mail in Vikings, which compressed my spine by about an inch and a half. That wasn't as heavy as the Ice Warrior suit. Um, I was promised all, you know, well, but there were other people, I mean, Jamie Hill, for instance, and Jamie's done so many of the, of the creatures and monsters in New Who. Yeah. And he's, he's pretty tough. You know, he's, he's, and he's also 25 years younger than me. <laughs> and, uh, nah, that's, that's getting up there. That's, that's the hottest, heaviest thing there is. And when you think about it, we're not moving terribly much. Um, but it was, it was, um, yeah, I mean, I'm, what am I? I'm about 20 stone, I suppose. Quite, quite used to physical weight. That was the heaviest thing I've ever had. Uh, and, and also quite disorientating. I don't know if, if people have, well, everyone's picked up on this. If you look at the, uh, the reference shots that came out through Blog to Who, they had to strip off three layers of the lenses and drill a bunch of holes in my, well, this one, my good eye, um, in order for me to be able to see anything. So, uh, yeah, kind of a, a sensory deprivation suit with a, a ton of weight on your back. It was, um, I, I miss Friday. I really do. And if he came back, I'd love to do it. But I'd have to do about six weeks in the gym before I did. <laughs> hey, listen, it's lockdown. We'd all have to do at least six weeks in the gym. <laughs> I, I'd have to do it just to get out of the house, I think. Uh, Cedric, thanks ever so much for your question. Um, I believe I also have a question. Actually, is Keith there? Keith, I know you have a question for for both uh, both guests, but I'll let you put it to um, to Debbie first of all. Hello, Keith. Hello, guys. Hi, Richard. Richard great to see you. Hi, Keith. Hi. Uh, oh, seems a long time since we last met. It is. <laughs> it it yeah, really does. Um, yeah, to both of you. Um, but we, uh, what are there any roles uh, that you haven't played so far that you would like to play, or any TV series you would like to appear in? Excellent question, Debbie. Let's start with you. That's a great question. Thanks ever so much, Keith. Um, is there anything that you would, any particular television program or role you would still like to be a part of? Um, I would, I mean, these days when nothing's happening, I will take anything going. <laughs> um, <laughs> but I think having just started watching the latest series of The Crown, I'd love to be in that because it's so posh and yep. I would never get cast as, I would never be posh. I'd be, you know, I'd be the maid or something, <laughs> but I wouldn't mind being a royal. I think that must be absolutely marvellous. And I'd like to be in one of those scenes where they go through all the crowds and you have to wave out the windows. Mm -hmm. So if you can think of a suitable royal that I could be, possibly a disgraced one, I'm not fussy, then uh, well, do let me know. That doesn't narrow it down, I don't think. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not playing Prince Andrew, don't give me that. <laughs> what about Fergie? Um, could you be Fergie? Oh, I probably could, yes. <laughs> <laughs> she hasn't appeared yet. I do wonder who's playing her, but yes. Well, she, think... she, she appeared very briefly in the last series, but as like a background character, I was like, I want a whole spin-off. You could yeah. be Fergie in a spin-off. I, I could. Think. I've got the red hair. Absolutely. You know. Absolutely. I could be. <laughs> so, other than The Crown, anything else? Is there a particular role you've seen, um, either television or theatrical, that you would still love to do? Well, I would love to be, I don't know if anyone's heard of Who's Afraid of Virginia Woolf? It was mm. a film, yes, with Elizabeth Taylor, I wish, mm. and uh, her husband at the time, Richard Burton. And it's just a brilliant play, and they get to shout at each other all night, and it's emotional and high drama. And I'd love to be uh, that. That is, I think, my ultimate stage role would be great. But I, again, apologies if you've heard this story before, but when I was at drama school in my second year, we did Greek tragedies, and I was cast as Clytemnestra, who is a terrible character. She, you know, kills her children and eats her husband and does yeah. all sorts of terrible things. And I gave my all on stage. And at the end, someone came up to me and went, Debbie, you were so funny. <laughs> and yeah. I think I realised at that moment that perhaps, <laughs> you know, comedy was my thing and not drama. But <laughs> it, inside of me, I am Lady Macbeth. So something dramatic would be lovely thank you very much to whoever's listening 
Lovely. We'll pass that on to the to the, <laughs> the powers that be. Richard, what about you? Is there is there anything you feel that's that's maybe not been in your career that you would just love to do? You know, this is going to sound like I haven't got any imagination, but as Debbie was saying, we're often not in control. Mm. I'm six foot seven. Um, I'm the size I am. I have the face I have. As, as my mother says, oh, it's nice to see a, a proper nose on television, whatever that means. <laughs> so, you know, never going to be Romeo, you know what I mean? So it, I, I, the, the aspect of it that I love is see what comes along and see what you can do with it. And, and that's why I was delighted to do Bucket on Head acting again, because it, it's a bit like being a puppeteer. You, you, you get to do anything then. Yeah. Um, but the thing I've been harbouring forever is wanting to play Fagin in Oliver mm. because he's so funny. And, and also in the in the original you know, book, this is a man of dubious morality and yeah. yet a product of the forces upon him. Um, but I wanted to play him as a Yorkshireman. And, and, and for my, my 30s, my standard audition song was reviewing the situation but instead of the sort of oi vey, it was more a up, um, which, which <laughs> nobody responded to positively. So, please, so, please you know, give us a verse, please, Richard. No, 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 no. Please. Uh, but, uh, <laughs> you know, ooh, a man's got an arch, hasn't he? Joking apart, hasn't he? Oh no, I'd be the first one to say that I wasn't a saint. Oh, I'm finding it hard to be really as black as they be. <laughs> I think we're going with this. Debbie, you could maybe, maybe you could be a West Country Nancy. <laughs> Hang on, West Country Nancy. Oh, as long as he needs me, I knew where I must be. <laughs> okay, I'm going to... We'll be getting the agents involved soon. Yes, we'll, we'll definitely be doing this. That's wonderful. Absolutely brilliant. Well, that was. Uh, thank you, Keith. That uh, that got all sorts of responses I wasn't necessarily expecting. But thank you very much for your question.